Good afternoon and welcome to my channel watercolor painting in the afternoon. I'm Beth. A couple of days ago I was in Walmart and I saw these tiny little canvases. Yeah, about three by three. Maybe, I don't know, they could be four by four. I'm not really sure which. But um, I'll tell you in just a sec. Yeah, four by four. Excuse me. Um, these four by four canvases, and I thought they were so cute, and I wanted to do a painting on one of them, but they're canvas, and you don't really do watercolor on canvas. But I remembered that I had this sample of Daniel Smith watercolor ground, so I bought the the canvases and came home and painted this canvas with Daniel Smith's watercolor ground in titanium white so that I could put watercolor on top of it later. Now what I painted here were some hellebores or some Linton roses or Christmas roses, which however you want to say it, but uh, these are blooming about now, about now-ish. They'll be blooming soon, let's put it that way, um, especially in my area in South Carolina. And I wanted to do a painting of them. I think they're very interesting little flowers. Some of them are deep purple or burgundy, uh, and some of the, them are these interesting greenish colors. Some of them are dual toned or they have more than one uh, color, you know, um, fading in and out of them. They're really interesting and beautiful flowers. But I thought it worked okay. Now, I do believe that it needs maybe a slightly thicker coat of the watercolor ground than I put on here. Because you can still very much see the grid, sort of, of that uh, canvas. And I'd like for that to be slightly less pronounced. So I'm going to try this again. I'm just going to open up this little frame here, this canvas. And we're going to try it again. And I'm going to do maybe a different type of hellebore on this canvas. But the first thing I need to do is put the watercolor ground. You can see it's very thick. I'm going to put the watercolor ground on it. Um, and I'm just kind of slapping it on there for right now. But I want enough, you know, I want enough on there to make a difference. I didn't get a whole lot in this jar. I mean, it's not a huge jar by any means. But uh, I'm going to take my little... Um, spongy brush here and get it just a little bit damp. Spongy brush. I have names for everything. Most of them end in Y. <laughs> Canvassy. Spongy brush. Okay, and let's just kind of fill in some of that with this watercolor ground. I want to fill in some of that um, texture, really with this. I, I don't mind it having some of the texture. I really don't, but because, um, you know, look at this. It's going to have some texture on it. Can you see when I put the, when I let the light glare on it, you see that it's going to have some texture on it, don't you? I'm sorry, I got cut off there for a second. My camera does that to me now and then. Um, so let's come back to this after it's dry. That's all I wanted to say. All right, so this has very much dried. Uh, there's nothing about that that says damp or anything else to me. It's very dry um, and I'm ready to go. And it's only been about, oh, an hour and a half, I think, since I painted that on. So it doesn't take a full 24 hours to cure unless, I guess unless you put a really, really thick coating on that. Otherwise, I think you're probably good to go. I haven't studied this enough to know how thick a cover you're supposed to put on your canvas. Maybe more than what I did. I don't know. But I, I'm experimenting, so that's the way that's going to go. Uh, I have cleaned off my palette, and I'm ready to paint some more hellebore. Now, um, these particular ones were green, and I think that, that's a really, that they're really pretty, that color. Um, but I'm going to also paint some in another popular color, and that's uh, the lavenders and the purples. 
and the mauves and burgundies and that kind of thing. Um, I think I'm going to go for kind of a mauvey burgundy color um, for this next group of hellebore. So let's see if we can mix up some colors that will work for that. I'm going to start. I'm actually going to start with some purple. I have this mauve here. This is something along the lines of mauve. I know it's um, from De La Rowney, permanent mauve or something like that. And that's, it's a nice, pretty purple color, but I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it because um, the flowers that I'm getting ready to paint are not quite that deep of a purple. They're more of a, a light purple. So, and I think that hellebore actually come in loads of different colors, but the main ones are green and purple. And yes, some of them are this purple instead of this one. But, um, you know, this is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, and we're gonna have, let's see, I think I'm just gonna have one layer of petals because you can, there are multi-petaled ones, you know, they've, they do all kinds of genetic things with them these days that uh, that allow them to be in different colors and different, um, you know, different how, how multiple layers of leaves and that kind of thing. So, but here's the first petal, and you can see that painting on this canvas, you can really see the texture of that canvas coming through, can't you? It's not. I don't know. Can you? Can you see that? If I get up too close, maybe not. But it's it's kind of hard to see it, maybe from far away. But uh, it does not get rid of that tone. Okay, so the first one I'm painting is just kind of you see it in a frontal position here. It's looking at you. different than my experience with the green. This is kind of um, puddling in some irritating ways that I don't like. And you know, I really brushed that stuff in there. So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work on everything. Or maybe some colors are uh, are harder to deal with. I don't know, but maybe when that it's possible that when that dries, it'll be a whole different animal. So let's just keep going and see what happens. I'm gonna make some more of this mauve and paint another one. Let's see. Maybe I've got a petal that comes down this way. And maybe I have, wow, that's kind of hard to do. I always want to be able to say, this was a great idea, you should try this. But sometimes ideas are not so great and maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> How's that for being honest? I'm going to take a little bit of this alizarin crimson all by itself. And, um, so where's my paper towel? way over here okay and I'm gonna pull a little bit of this paint away well it lifts really well doesn't it it does do that it lifts like crazy and I'm gonna put a petal right there that's not this that's uh, so this flower is facing down that way and I'm gonna put a petal right here I do wonder if I got enough of the um, of the watercolor ground on there because you know, like maybe you need a really super super thick um, layer. 
So here's this petal is going to kind of come down this way and you can see it sort of the underside of the petal. Now that it's losing its line right there. You won't be able to see so I'm going to have to come back and fix that later. But for now I'm just going to dab this in there. And we'll we'll come back to that later and make sure that it's right. Okay. I hope it turns out better than it's doing for me right now. But this is good, right? If it, if it doesn't turn out, you get to see that, hey, that doesn't really work. <laughs> I don't think I'll waste my time with that. All right, now one more at least. Let's do one pointing out that way. So I'm going to just do a very light petal here and a petal here and a petal here. That's kind of, I might put the, um, the stem starting about right here. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll come back and we'll put some more detail in that's going to make it look a whole lot better. Although, I'll tell you what I will do first though, especially for this one. So what I'm going to do first, sometimes the inner part of the flower is still very, very green. And if you just touch that purple paint with some green and don't try to mix it because you'll get brown grayish goop just want to touch it with the green and you see it just kind of bleeds up in there a little bit that looks like a hellebore um, I'm gonna put a little bit over here too just 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 touch it just touch it that's all I'm gonna do okay now I'm gonna let that dry and we will see <laughs> we'll see what happens so here's more or less what it looks like and um, I've got to admit that frankly it looks kind of like a hot mess uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure why this worked so much better but let's you know let's not give up on it let's try to um, see what we can do so taking this mauve which I'm, I'm calling it mauve mauve is one of those colors I'm not really sure what mauve actually is but um, we're going to take this color and we're going to come back over our petals with some details. And you see what I mean about green turning to brown uh, when it's mixed with purple? It kind of does, doesn't it? Uh, let's, let's pull some color here along this edge so that we can hide some of that uh, ragged edge there. See what I'm doing? I want to hide some of that ragged edge. And smooth it out. I often, just often wondered if this would work. And I was so excited when I did this one because it seemed to work so well. But I may not have put enough uh, ground on this or maybe I smoothed it out too much. I don't know. <laughs> if you've ever done this and you've had more success, I would love to hear from you. Let me know how it worked for you. Um, this is it's kind of working for me, but... I'm just having to come back a lot and put put a lot of uh, layers, I think. I think this is going to need layers. Once again, I wanted to put the stem about right there. So let's come back over here. Let's see how this lifts. Again, let me see. Um, I keep putting my paper towels where I can't find them. Here we go. Uh, let's see how this lifts. 
Let me just put a little bit of dampness on my brush. I'm guessing it lifts really well, like really well. Okay, so we can actually put a, f a line right there. I'm, I'm having to tilt it up this way because there's a glare when I look straight down on it. So this is a petal right here, you see? And I want it to be a lot lighter than the petals underneath it. Again, I've got a lot of ragged edges. Okay, that kind of reminds me of a petal underneath there. I'll pull this down a little bit. I just don't like the way that it's just leaving big stripes. So, I mean, is this successful? Hmm, I don't know. I'm going to have to keep playing with this until I make that decision. And I may not, you know, I may not film every second of that, but, uh, you know, I think the more I work on it, the better it's going to look without, I don't want it to look overworked. Um, but I wonder how much overworking it is also a product of watercolor paper. You know what I'm saying? Um, that it's harder to overwork. A canvas. But you can keep going back on a canvas because you can kind of lift it up and move it around a little bit. And again, I'm going to let this dry. But we'll just see, you know. We'll just see. One thing I noticed about hellebore as I was looking it up on the internet is that a lot of them have really interesting little details. Like, for example, a hellebore might have some little dots of color all up in here, coming up the main stem and then just spreading out. Let's see what happens. Since this is an experiment, I'll do that again. That looks pretty interesting. All down in here. Just keep turning it and doing some more. I'm conscious of not making this too long because uh, <laughs> I got one comment from someone, God bless her, she said, uh, I watched this whole thing and I wasn't even bored. And I loved that comment because what I had done was really speed up the, the process. Like I had like by eight times or so. And, um, you know, she was being very honest with me. And I was just, it just tickled me because I thought, yeah, you know, <laughs> maybe it's boring watching somebody put dots on a piece of paper or, or canvas. But um, if you're interested in doing it with me, maybe it's less less boring. I don't know. All right, let's um, let's add some green to this baby right here because I think that inner part is usually very um, green and bright and, and in stark contrast to the purple. You can see where I added that green, it did actually turn a little bit brown, so got to put some different green in it now. So I'm just going to put a little little star right there and then start putting some green around the center. There is some a, a whitish look in there too. I'm going to put some that's just yellow, some yellow dots. We'll see how that turns out as well. So we'll just kind of let that paint blend with each other a little bit. 
some yellow and some green. And it really does, um, see that right there? But watch this. I don't like the way all that paint kind of lumped together, but watch. That's one great thing about a canvas, right? You can just lift that straight off. You do not have to leave it on there. Let's get that dried a little bit and we can just redo it with maybe a thicker consistency of paint there so that it doesn't spread so much. And become sort of this conglomerated chunk of red. Of course it did that here and here too. You know what, maybe it looks would look better if I just made all of them do that instead of trying to make them not do that. That is the nature of watercolor, right? Is to kind of blend and, and um, do its own thing and kind of give you these beautiful surprises. All right, and over here, what I'm gonna do is just kind of outline that petal a little bit with this red, with this, with this um, alizarin crimson and pull up some lines because this petal is facing downward. I'll do the same over here. Oop, that's too wet. So I am noticing that I've got to be a lot more careful on a canvas than I am on paper. And the, it is making a difference. The, um, having it be on can on a canvas and not on watercolor paper. It's making a tremendous difference in how the paint reacts. So just to let you know, it's a little bit of a frustration to do it this way. A little bit. I'm determined to make this something that's okay. But, um, I'm not necessarily going to do this many times over again because I'm not sure that I like it all that much. So I think I will put the painting this way. What we'll do is we'll come back with some green leaves and I'm just gonna paint a couple of them for you so that you see what I'm doing. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me <laughs> as if I could make you do anything, right? Um, but I'm not gonna ask you to sit here and watch me paint every leaf. Um, let's just do a few of them together. And then I'll show you the finished product. So I'm making this nice earthy kind of green here. A little bit of an olivey green. I did that by adding um, sap green and a indigo blue and a little bit of um, burnt umber. So I'm gonna have a nice big leaf right here. A nice big leaf. You can really see the texture of that canvas, can't you? Let's get a nice dark. Let's do that nice and dark. I want a nice thick consistency of paint on this canvas because it seems to need it. Ah, there we go. Now, if you really want to be technical, these leaves kind of have, have uh, some little spikes on them, but I'm not going to be too terribly technical because this is as I, as I have said many times before already, this is an experiment. I just want to see what happens. Um, here we go. Let's put one right here. And maybe one coming off of this, which means I need a little stem, I think. I'm just gonna get a little sap green and a little bit of the sepia brown here. Make a nice little stem coming off of that. Here. 
and here. So that's kind of, it's a little bit strange, isn't it? And I, I may cover some of that up with a leaf, but I want to indicate it for my own happiness. Let's see. Let's make some more of this. I want it nice and thick. Nice and thick. Okay. And then maybe I'll put a leaf coming this way off of this one. And it's going to cover up some of that. Get right up to the purple part. Just like that. Okay. And maybe this one and this one also have some things coming off of them. Um, the, the little petals here um, before they opened up. You know, they were all covered up in these things. All right. This one's coming off that one. And we might need another leaf somewhere in there. I don't know. I don't know. I might put another bud in there too. Why don't I show you what I come up with after the fact and um, we'll let this be it for now and then I'll show you what I what my final product was. But this was an, an interesting experience and an interesting experiment with the canvas and the watercolor ground. I think it works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes and it depends on maybe how thick your watercolor ground was and perhaps um, how long you let it dry and you know a lot of different factors because I think this turned out fairly well and I'm hoping that this can turn out fairly well too I'm just going to keep working on it uh, thank you for watching I'll show you that final result so basically what I did here was just add some more lines a few dots here just like I added on on these and made a nice dark line right here where you can see this one petal overlaps another on that bud. That's really all that I think I'm going to do um, other than just maybe make some faint lines um, on the leaves themselves, you know, just like a, a vein or two. So right here. And maybe right here. You really see it on this leaf. Maybe we'll make it so that this leaf is kind of um, folded in. You can do that by painting one half of the leaf a darker color than the other half. So that it just kind of looks like it's, like that's the back of it and this is the front. And here, connect that a little bit better. And just make a little mark or two. And here. Okay. Keep these um, stems visible. All right, that's all I'm going to do for that one. I think it turned out okay. I did have to work on it a little bit. I had to, um, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of get it to do what I wanted it to do. But I think it turned out fairly well. So yeah, with this one, I. <laughs> I didn't even use watercolor ground. So, uh, I mean, you know, and I think it's just as good. I mean, you know, it's its own entity, but it's just as good. So, make up your own mind to use watercolor ground or not. It doesn't matter. I do think you'd have to do a small painting. I don't think that would work on a great big, you know, like a big old painting on a big canvas. But, hey. And whatever works, you know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.